that whatever we see within the world, within other people, it is, it is a mirror image of the particular state of our own consciousness. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada. He said that a person finds fault with others only when they are honeycombed with faults themselves. This is, in a most graphic and exciting way, revealed in this particular story from the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Maharaj Yudhisthira is performing the most difficult, the most esteemed and glorified of all forms of yajna, the Rajasuya, that only the presiding emperor of the entire planet can perform. And he wasn't doing it for himself. He wasn't doing it for power, for fame, for prestige. He had a particular plan that at the very um, highlight of this, after the procedures have been successfully and perfectly completed, then one performs a worship ceremony of the most worshipable qualified person assembled. And because this sacrifice was such a prestigious and um, influential event for the whole world. All the greatest rishis, yogis, kings, princes, practically everyone was there. Yudhisthira Maharaj chose to worship Krishna during the Agra Puja. And that was his whole purpose. Like King Prataparudra, he was the king of Orissa. But when it came to a great ceremony where the maximum people were going to be present, biggest crowd ever during the Ratha Yatra, millions of people, he took the role of a humble street sweeper because he wanted to show everyone Jagannath is king. Jagannath is great. I'm not great. I'm just grateful that I could be the servant of the servant of the servant who, of who is really great. Let all honor and glory be to Lord Jagannath. In a similar way, during this incredible experience of this event, when so many uh, exalted persons were present, Yudhisthira Maharaj wanted to reveal what was in his heart. I'm the servant of the servant of Krishna. And the greatest blessing I have is to inspire people to recognize Krishna, to take shelter of Krishna. So that was his heart. And when it was come to choose the person, his younger brother, Sahadev, was like the voice that spoke what was in Yudhisthira Maharaja's heart. And he praised Krishna. Yudhisthira performed the ceremony with such intimate, genuine love and devotion. He washed Krishna's feet. He gave him a throne to sit upon. He sprinkled that water on his head and on all of his relatives and ministers. He drank it. He did pujas and chanted so many beautiful had Brahmins chanting mantras. It was wonderful. And almost everyone there was in ecstatic happiness. Nothing 
It was the culmination. To see Krishna glorified in such a way. So while Yudhisthira Maharaj had tears of love in his eyes, on the other side of the room, Shishupal had blazing coals of anger and envy in his eyes. It was intolerable. It was unbearable for him to see Krishna honored in this way because he wanted that honor for himself. It is said that if you water the root of the tree, the water goes to every part of the tree. If you offer your love to Krishna, then your love goes to every living being and everything because everything is, is growing from the root of Krishna, the source of everything that exists. But similarly, if we are envious of Krishna, then we are potentially envious of everyone and everything. And how does that envy manifest? Through this ahankar, we want to enjoy, we want to be the controller although Krishna is the supreme control. We want to be the proprietor. Krishna is the supreme proprietor, and we want to be the enjoyer of God's property. Whether it's through other people or through other things, this tendency to um, immorally without a spiritual foundation to enjoy the things of this world, to possess the things of this world, is an expression whose root cause is that we're not happy acknowledging that it's meant for Krishna. And that's why great sages and rishis and yogis and enlightened Vaishnavas especially, when they see someone attached to power and prestige and money and all these things for their own selfish interests, however great they become in the eyes of the world, through their skills, through their talents, If they're doing it in a spirit of service, devotees really are so happy because they see that they're, they're, they're making progress. But if they're doing it in a selfish spirit, then while in Kali Yuga, most of the rest of the world honors them and glorifies them as being great, A devotee sees it as pathetic. It's just a very, very elegant, complicated expression of envy of God. They don't want to ask favors from such a person. They pray for such a person. They're willing to give their lives to help such a person out of his pathetic, poverty-stricken condition spiritually. And from reading Srimad Bhagavatam, when we have satsang association of true devotees, this is actually how we should start learning to see the world, through the eyes of truth, not through the eyes of illusion. Shishupal was so envious of Krishna. And because he was envious of Krishna, he was actually envious potentially of anyone who got in the way of his own selfish, egoistic desires. So he was also very envious of Yudhisthira. 
Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, it is explained in one of the previous purports, he tells how Shishupal, at the very time when Sahadev proposed Krishna's name for the Agra Puja, Shishupal Paul could have spoken everything he was going to speak, but he restrained the tendency for a very evil reason. Because he knew if he presented it then, there would be a debate, and whoever won the debate, then this, the ceremony would continue. But now, the ceremony's done. Yudhisthira Maharaj already did the Agra Puja. So now Shishupal speaking, because that means from his words, according to his own intention, the entire yagya, the sacrifice from beginning of end, would have been doomed, cursed, and fail. It's done, it was done wrong, it's, every benefit is negated, and the curse of the offense that you've all committed is upon you. That was his commitment, his strategically planned intention. So here it is at the very culmination when everything is just concluded. And from his mouth, what was in his mind came pouring out. He sees nothing but negativity in Krishna. <laughs>